Aaron O'Toole is the new leader of the Federal Conservative Party. This makes him a very important person in Canadian politics because while he isn't Prime Minister now, he's the most likely person to become Canada's leader over the next few years. So what should you know about Aaron O'Toole? Where did he come from? Was he always a politician? What does he want to do if he's elected to Canada's top job? Let's take a look. Hi, you're watching Gabby on Government. I'm Gabby and I'm an ordinary Canadian on a journey to learn about my government. I'm so happy you're joining me on today's journey where I'll be talking about Aaron O'Toole. So to start off, where did O'Toole come from? What's his origin story? O'Toole was born in Montreal, but his parents moved to Ontario when he was just a baby. He spent most of his childhood in Bowmanville, which for those of you who aren't familiar with Ontario, Bowmanville is like a suburb of a suburb. A very vanilla town of about 40,000. O'Toole's mom was a teacher and his dad worked at GM in nearby Oshawa. O'Toole probably lived a reasonably regular middle-class life, except for two things that happened when he was nine. O'Toole's mother sadly died of breast cancer, and O'Toole's father was elected a school trustee, the beginning of a life surrounded by politics. O'Toole's father became a municipal councillor when Aaron was 18, and then an MPP when Aaron was 21. If I had to guess, this probably made O'Toole feel a special connection to political life, and importantly, gave him insider knowledge of what it means to be a politician. At 18, O'Toole left home and went to the Royal Military College in Ottawa for history and political science. He graduated when he was 22 and joined the Canadian Forces Air Command. When O'Toole was in the military, he was never posted overseas. He was stationed at different places around Canada, mostly flying around in a helicopter doing surveillance and search and rescue. I asked my brother who was in the reserves and he said there was nothing atypical about O'Toole's military career, though he did win an award for rescuing an injured fisherman at sea. While posted in Halifax, O'Toole met his future wife, Rebecca, who he married when he was 27. Rebecca went to King's College in Halifax and has worked in political parties, the Toronto Argonauts, and a variety of communications companies. Rebecca and Aaron have two kids, Molly, who's in high school, and Jack, who's in elementary school. Anyways, back to Aaron. After his years of active military duty, O'Toole went to Dalhousie for law school and started practicing law when he was 30. It was actually in law school that O'Toole decided he eventually wanted to get into politics, but he wanted to wait until his kids were older. But he ended up starting his political career early than he planned. I don't know if you remember, but in 2012 there was this orange juice scandal. A conservative MP from Durham, O'Toole's riding, expensed $16 for an orange juice, among other follies. So she resigned, and a by-election was held to replace her. Since O'Toole was involved in his community and already had some notoriety from his father, the conservatives asked him to run. He threw his hat in the ring and easily won his seat in Parliament. Fun fact, it was the first time in Canadian history that a father-son duo were MP and MPP of the same riding. So now we enter the phase of O'Toole's political life, and this is going to be a bit of political blah 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 until we get to his political beliefs, but I think it's important to understand that O'Toole wasn't a run-of-the-mill MP. So as far as we know, O'Toole has always been a conservative. As a politician, he started off as a backbencher MP in Stephen Harper's government in 2012. Remember in my video about Parliament, we talked about different types of MPs? The lowest rank of MP is a backbencher, but O'Toole wasn't a backbencher for long. You remember that being part of the cabinet is the fanciest position in Parliament? Well, in 2013, O'Toole was appointed as a secretary to one of these fancy cabinet ministers. From my understanding, being a parliamentary secretary is basically one step up from being a backbencher and one step down from being in the cabinet. But in 2015, three years after getting elected, O'Toole became one of the fancies as Minister of Veteran Affairs. 
Unfortunately for him, this didn't last long since later that year, the Liberals won a majority government. This bumped O'Toole from the cabinet to the less fancy shadow cabinet. Remember, the shadow cabinet are the fancy MPs from the second place party, whose job it is to critique the cabinet. In the shadow cabinet, O'Toole was appointed the foreign affairs opposition critic. After Stephen Harper stepped down in 2016, O'Toole put his hat in the ring to become interim leader. He was beat out by then Speaker of the House, Andrew Scheer, who would then go on to be the permanent leader, beating O'Toole a second time. But that didn't stop O'Toole from running for the Conservative top spot a third time after Scheer stepped down from his position back in December 2019. O'Toole's main competition in the recent leadership race was Peter McKay, but it should also be noticed he ran against newcomer Leslyn Lewis, who was the first black woman to ever run for leadership of a federal party. O'Toole ended up winning the leadership race in a beautiful display of the merits of ranked ballot voting. O'Toole's acceptance speech was powerful and included a few good zingers. The world still needs more Canada. It just needs less Justin Trudeau. It is time for many Liberal and NDP voters to socially distance themselves from those out-of-touch out parties. I believe that whether you are black, white, brown, or from any race or creed, whether you are LGBT or straight, whether you are an Indigenous Canadian, or have joined the Canadian family three weeks ago or three generations ago, whether you are doing well or barely getting by, whether you worship on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, or not at all. You are an important part of Canada, and you have a home in the Conservative Party of Canada. I want to make a quick note here that I've heard grumblings that O'Toole won the leadership because he pandered to the Conservative base. I had a lot of trouble finding where these claims were coming from. If you know, let me know in the comments. It should be noted that the Conservative Party is a big tent party. This means that there are a lot of ideologies included in one party, which makes it difficult to please everybody. It's particularly difficult to balance the ideals of the social conservatives and the fiscal conservatives. If the Liberal Party was a big tent party, they would basically swallow up the NDP and the Greens. If that happened on the Liberal side, you can imagine the difficulty Trudeau would have with, for example, the climate desires of the vocal activists with the more centrist policies like giving subsidies to oil companies. Now back again to O'Toole. So now we know all about his background. He started from the bottom, now he's here. Now comes the fun part. What's he all about? His mother's death, his father's involvement in politics, his military background, his training in law, his time as an MP? What ideology sprouted from his experience? When someone runs for political office, they almost always have a political platform that can be found on their website. It usually states what the person wants to do when they're in office. I'm going to go through some of O'Toole's policy promises because I think it gives a pretty good sense of who he wants to be as conservative leader. Let's start with social issues because these are the ones that always seem to be front and center in the media's coverage of the conservatives. On the perennial issue of abortion, O'Toole is the first conservative leader to be pro-choice and, like the last two conservative leaders, has proclaimed that it won't be an issue the conservatives revisit. See the asterisk below. On LGBTQ plus issues, O'Toole supports same-sex marriage and has pledged to be the first conservative leader to march in pride parades, as long as uniform officers are included. He has no plans to reverse cannabis legalization, but says that he would reverse all of Trudeau's changes to Canada's gun laws. On Indigenous affairs, O'Toole seems to have a good reputation with the One First Nations band in his riding, and has been making an effort to develop relationships with Indigenous peoples more broadly. On foreign policy, O'Toole has some interesting platform ideas, supporting free movement of people between Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and Australia. He wants to impose sanctions on China for human rights violations and ban Huawei from Canada's 5G networks. 
O'Toole seems to be quite pro-immigration, even saying Canada should increase immigration through family reunification to make up for the recent decrease in economic immigrants. This is notable because Conservatives are not typically the party of choice in the GTA, where there is a high immigrant population. This region has been recognized as an important area for Conservatives to win in the next election, and it happens that O'Toole holds one of the few Conservative seats in the GTA. In terms of budgets and the economy, O'Toole says he wants to end subsidies to corporations and increase child benefits. He wants to simplify taxes, arguing that a complicated tax system benefits the wealthy who can afford to find loopholes. He wants to adjust Canada's equalization system, which he argues is unfair to Alberta. He also plans on making a law to ensure free trade between Canada's provinces. Fun fact, yes, free trade does not exist currently between provinces. Crazy. I can buy wine from Argentina, California, Italy, and Hungary, but not from BC. He also wants to significantly cut funding from the CBC. Please don't take away my quirks and quirks. In terms of climate change, O'Toole doesn't have a plan. He says he wants to create one, but in this day and age, I think it's crucial to be forward thinking on this, and O'Toole is clearly not. His plan only goes so far as to say he's going to get rid of the carbon tax, which he says is, quote, not an environmental plan, but a tax plan. Which, fine, you can argue that, but what then? O'Toole is a different kind of conservative in many ways, and I hope he continues that by putting some energy into a comprehensive climate change plan. Imagine if the conservatives pushed the liberals on climate change. What a world. <laughs> I may be so bold to say that I think in general O'Toole's policies are quite centrist and reflect the sentiments of a lot of Canadians. Regardless of what you think of the policies O'Toole has proposed, the fact is they are just that, policies. The true test will be if O'Toole actually turns those policies into action. As my father says, talk is cheap. I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you that politicians don't always deliver on their promises. We are committed to ensuring that the 2015 election will be the last federal election using first past the post. They can also make vague promises and then violate the spirit of them. For example, what exactly does it mean to simplify the tax system? I'll be really curious to see how Canadians react to O'Toole. I thought the Globe and Mail put it well when they wrote, O'Toole's challenge is to define himself before the Liberals do it for him. I've been really fascinated by the media coverage on O'Toole so far. I don't think it's a stretch to say that most Canadian media has a Liberal bias, and the only thing they've really tried to hammer him on is the fact that his fellow Conservative MPs have extreme views and ask what he's going to do about it, and that he's been wishy-washy about what it means to stamp out systematic racism. At this point, they can't seem to nail him for typically unpopular Conservative views. I wish they would ask him some questions about climate change. Although he's been in politics for eight of his 25 working years, O'Toole has been branding himself as someone who is not a career politician, and it seems to be an angle that's working. He doesn't carry the baggage of more established politicians, but no doubt he will have baggage soon. What that baggage looks like will shape our politics for years to come. So now that Aaron O'Toole is the leader of the Conservatives, his next big hurdle will be the general federal election. The election isn't scheduled until 2023, but if you're a keen bean, you've probably heard that an election could happen sooner. Look out for my next video about confidence and how it influences the timing of elections. So, what do you think? Do you think O'Toole will be a useful tool to the people of Canada, or just a tool? I tried. Do you think he'll fade into the background against world-famous Trudeau? Does he have what it takes to be Canada's next Prime Minister? let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm not a civics expert, so if I got something wrong or you want to add something, let me know in the comments. I think learning about civics is super important, so if you want to help other people find my content, I would be so grateful if you would like this video, share it, and subscribe. Thanks again, and see you next time.